Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just a quick one, I'm just here um, flat out packing injector kits and um, just have this little quick tech tip, mainly only for people that are or will be replacing their injectors. So if you purchase the injector kit, you'll get a bunch of fuel pipes like this, just four of them. And they're actually numbered one, two, three, four, but it's on the part number. So if you have a look at the part number, there's 10 digits, the fifth digit in, right? It'll be one, it'll be two, it'll be three, it'll be four. Now, one other little tip with number four fuel pipe. Um, basically, yeah, it's got the clamp separately. You can see that there, so whatever. Just wanted to say, you obviously take that little clamp out of the bag and it, it replaces the one over the pipe. So when you, th you know, you just throw away number four fuel pipe with the clamp on it. Obviously, you need to keep and reuse the bolt. But I just, the main tip was, Pretty obvious really, but um, if you look at your fuel pipes and you go, oh, which one's which and you're not sure, and it, you know, it seemed obvious to me, but maybe it isn't that obvious. So I just thought I'd do this quick little uh, tech tip. Um, they're numbered. So the fifth digit in, one, two, three, four. As I've said in um, videos, in the replacement videos in the VIP group, as I said, we've got a number of those. I think there's seven complete injector replacement jobs, you know, probably starting and fin finishing from different areas. Maybe I mentioned it in there, but it's been a while since I've done those. I can't remember what I put in there, uh, what I have and what I haven't put in there. So I just thought I'd do that little bit. Um, it's really important that you watch those videos before you replace your injectors if you're doing it yourself. If you've contacted me and you've already decided you're doing it yourself, we're here to support you with that. Um, but it's really important you watch all those videos and more than once so that you... Get yourself educated so you can avoid the pitfalls that often occur um, with people generally replacing these injectors. It's kind of a bit of a big job. It needs to be clean. It needs to be precise. Okay, so that's the injector numbers. The little bit extra information, I suppose, is I remove one, then two, then three, then four. When refitting them, I refit four, then three, then two, then one. And the other little tip is, depending what tools you're using, we use a crow's foot tool with a torque wrench to torque up the pipes of course that's the only way using new pipes new injectors new pipes it's bold in the workshop manual um, is the only way to do it and you need to torque those new fuel pipes the 32 newton meters if you're reusing them on the same injectors which you can do up to another approximately two times you know I'd, I suggest avoiding it to avoid the risk of contamination it's not worth it but if you must take them out and it's clean and you think you've done it right you can reuse you can reuse them maximum three times safely um, but you need to upgrade that torque spec the second time to 35 newton meters um, so a little bit of important information there um, refitting them so i will sit four in place number three in place number two in place and then i'll hold number two right up firm to the manifold into the bracket while i torque off number two at the common rail before I fit number one, because number one tends to get in the way of number two a little bit, okay? So that's your little tech tip also. So there's a couple of tech tips here. I'm trying to keep this one short, but you know, the information is just gonna keep bleeding out. So important stuff, guys, and it is relevant. A lot of the information, as people put in the comments, it's relevant to other vehicles as well, even if you don't have a Prado or Hilux. So if you haven't already, subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss that next important bit of information. Um, so yeah, talk number two, and then put number one in place. And then what I do is uh, put all, make sure all the clamps are on before I do any further because the clamps and the retaining you know, brackets and stuff, they help hold everything in place because sometimes the pipes, they kind of like want to try and twist while you talk. There's nothing you can do about that, okay? The main thing is, it's not bad, but sometimes they want to twist. They want to bend a little bit. You sort of, it's, it's a bit out of control. You can't control that. It's not a bad thing. Never had a problem. But you want to make sure you got those clamps in place. So, talk number. Make sure you when you talk number two down at the common rail end only, you're holding that pipe up against the retaining clamp up on the inlet manifold. Okay. So make sure all the pipes in the right place before you tighten. You don't want to tighten up and then have to bend it. You know to get the other end on and it's sort of out of place. Doesn't work too well with the clamps. You know, make sure it's all happy. Get all the clamps on. Nip those up just nicely. They're meant to be five newton meters. Sometimes you've got to go a bit more because of those clamps, the rubber goes a bit hard or soft or gets, you know, squashed. People over tighten them, whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as they're firm that they're not moving and sliding up and down the pipe. Sometimes you've got to rework and rebend them a little bit, things like that. Um, you don't want them sliding on the pipe, guys. Um, and as long as there's no metal of that clamp rubbing anywhere near the pipe. See, third tech tip in one video. 
you know, John, you're going to have a ball with this one. Anyway, so you don't want them sliding up the pipe because if they come to the corner, then the end of the metal and the clamp can hit the next part of the pipe around the bend. It's going to rub through in no time if that happens, okay? You're going to have a fuel leak. car's going to stop. It's going to start leaking fuel slowly. It's going to get worse really quick and the car's going to come to a stop. No fuel pressure. Okay, we don't, that's very rare. We don't really see that, but it's a precaution. The reason we don't see it is because guess what? That's how you do it. Look, it's pretty, you've got to be pretty unlucky to have the clamp slide all the way to the end and press hard enough at the bend. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, so yeah, okay, you got all the clamps on. Then I'm going to go and do the easiest ones first. I'm going to go along the valve cover. It doesn't matter what order, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. All I'll say is double check them, triple check them, like you did before you put the cover back on, okay? Um, don't think because you watch this video you can go and do your injectors. You probably can and you might probably get lucky and you've done them before, but we've had people that have done six or ten sets of injectors on these guys in the trade that start buying injectors from us and they say, mate, watching those videos was awesome. You know, they got a, quite a few bits of info out of there that made things easier. So, uh, and avoiding the pitfalls, the misalignment, which is really important. You don't want to get that far into the job and you didn't get that alignment quite right. Uh, I think we've got a video on YouTube as well. So it's really important to watch all those other videos. If you've got a few tech tips out of this, don't forget to give us the thumbs up so we know we're doing the right thing. Um, so once you go along the valve cover, tighten those four up nicely, 32 Newton meters. Then you go down to your common rail and it doesn't matter. You've done number two. If you can get your crow's foot on there, you can check that again last. But I'd probably go number one because number two is done and then three and four. Now, in our videos, we talk about moving that inlet stay out of the way and how to do it again the most easily the easy way to avoid any issues but for this video we're going to keep it short so look i hope you like that it's about seven minutes let me just think what else i've got for you before we um before we end this one you know we're gonna have a few short ones a few medium ones a few longer ones i hope you like it um yeah so one and then three and four for example and then just go back and double check number two right it's all about double triple checking have a look alignment double check all your clamps make sure they're not sliding and another little tip with those clamps um what you do is you check them each service right so when you service the vehicle right the clamps we're talking about that's these sorts of clamps here right so got a couple here actually some part here yeah, more tech tips see part numbers there you go john at seven minutes 29 part numbers for the clamps Clamp injection, these are about 20, 30 bucks each, so they're not cheap, right? That one's the one with a nut on it, welded on the back, so um, so if you've got clamps missing, that's the flat one without the nut, right? So that's the top, okay? And there's your part number. You can take a screenshot off. You've got your, grab your phone, you can take a photo of your screen if you need to, or if you've got a phone, just press the two buttons, take a screenshot. That's the part number, you know, clamp injection, right? And this is this one here, was I too quick? Sorry, I thought I went long enough. This one here, that's the one that goes underneath. It's got the bolt welded to it, okay? Hope you got your screenshot. There's those two. While we're at it, let's see if we can find a bolt, because, yeah, here we go. Clamp bolt, right, there you go. They're three bucks each, apparently. I don't know if you can read that part number. I'll try and get it really clear for you. Take your screenshot. Whose handwriting's that? Anyway, that's what the bolts look like, right? They're just an M6, whatever the case may be, but we have all these spares here in stock. Um, if you know you've got clamps missing, you can either order those from Toyota um, before you do your job, or you can ask me if I've got them in stock. They just, they, look, we have a few in stock, but they do move a little bit. If you know you've got them missing, um, we can add it into the injector kit if we've got it in stock. So just maybe something for you to check before you do the job. Check if your clamps are there, check if any of them are missing. So we've got the bolt, we've got the front, the back, and we've got that flat plate while we're at it. Let's keep it going, okay? Let me find that um, next part for you, okay. How about this? If you've got a Hilux and the clamp from the fuel line, the one that clamps the fuel line, the small line, to the bigger rod, if you've got that clamp missing, that's your part number there. Let me just, I'm digging through here a bit. On the Prados and that, if you've got the one that goes outside the EJR cooler, there's two, there's two heater hoses and there's meant to be a double-ended plastic clamp like that. Or this is the one that I recommend using. There's those weird clamps on the 120 Prados. They're quite crap to undo. Always fine and broken on that. I just replace them with um, with these, right? So um, old bag, part numbers at the top there. 90464005574, right? That's those clamps. They're about seven or eight. It says seven dollars on there, so seven or eight bucks each. Just trying to find this flat plate. See what happens with these short videos. Anyway, where's this flat plate? Just trying to find it. Won't be long now, I don't think. 
Um, well, I said I don't think. Digging through the box here, struggling. Where are they? Don't tell me I haven't got any. Mm -hmm. Can't believe it. Hang on, I've got a lot of stuff here. Just going through them, won't be long. Could be worth the wait. Uh, here we go, you know, we're getting there. Here we go. And a little bonus as soon as you waited. A little bonus. Here we go. So we've got a few of those there. You know, we've got, there's those flat plates. I don't know if they're 10 or 20 bucks each. A little rip off. There you go. Screenshot that one. Right. It's, uh, that's the flat plate that goes over the fuel lines, right? And sometimes what you'll have is the studs missing as well, right? So there's the studs, right? Uh, part number 901106 There you go. Bada bing, right? What else have we got? The nuts. Are we going to go the nuts? No, nah, we're not. Okay, yeah, we got the nuts here. Here you go. There's the nuts. Isn't this funny? I'm not telling you about fuel. I suppose everything to do with fuel lines, isn't it? Okay, fuel line, important information. It's gold, isn't it? Yeah, screenshot that. 9017 or whatever, right? Old bags anyway. We got a lot of different supplies for all this stuff. Bits and pieces all over the joint. Anyway, I reckon that's about it. There you go, line. I've made a mess here with all sorts of parts. That's all your fuel line information, important tech tip. Thanks for watching. I'll be looking in the comments for more ideas on what other information you need. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned because we're going to go through all the questions and comments people have made and um, answer those questions in a video as soon as we get time. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.